us uh, even develop explain this, but I just want to explain a little bit more. But that is okay. Now let's try to calculate what is the fan out, right? So the fan out is just like what we say, if the gate and simple inverter have the same driving power, same extrinsic delay, how much larger gate capacitor than the inverter it has? Okay. So, so how do we do it, right? So for example, let's start with a uh, N gate, LAN gate. Still LAN gate is the easiest, right? A, B, A, B, right? And this is the out. Now, I say we need to size it to have the same power. Can you tell me how I should size the uh, N MOS? If our baseline is two one, how do I size this so they have the same resistance as the simple inverter? Uh, two two. Two two. And then how about the PMOS? Two two. Also two two, right? We don't say one one because the worst case condition is that you only have one of them conducting. Okay, so this is good. And then now the question is, uh, what is the, sorry, I have, right. So now the question is, what is the fan in now? So here you see that my fan out here, I actually give you a extreme case. I, I say tie them together, but actually in a real definition, in this case, we only consider one signal. Okay, consider only one signal okay because the worst case condition you will be only have one signal transisting right so we only consider one signal okay so for example what is the gate capacitance you see the gate cap seen by a is what is 2 cgp right and 2 cgn correct but what is the gate cap seen in inverter, right? Let's just recall. The inverter come in this way, right? 2, 1, right? So it's C, G, P plus, I mean. 2, C, G, P plus 1, C, G. Yeah. So this is a little bit confusing. C, G, P, I mean the minimum. The minimum one. Okay. Now, but we try to simplify it. Here, we just assume they are the same, which makes sense. If you remember, actually the CG are the same. Remember when we do the transition, right? CG becomes uh, W on L times times C OX, but W times L times C OX, right? Whether it is in off state or on state. Of course, you also have the uh, overlap capacitance, right? But we're proportional to W on L, C OX, right? Plus uh, maybe uh, W times uh, C, G, O, S, plus W times C, I mean, C, G, D, O, C, G, S, O, correct? It's proportional to W. This is also true, right? So this is like four unit of C. This one is like three unit of C. So what is the ratio, which we call the logical effort? G equal to four C divided by three C equal to four divided by three. Is this okay? That is how you do it. Okay, if you go back to here, you see that while here I assume the fan out is tying them together, but if I only consider one case in case, then it will become three divided by four, right? And then so if you multiply by this G, it becomes one, just like the fan out here. And that is correct, that is correct, right? If I only have one driving it, then I should have the similar extrinsic delay. Okay, uh, so 
I think you understand what I'm saying here, right? So here maybe let me erase it because when you study, then you might correlate to the other part. Then I'm going this time, I'm going to say only consider one signal. Okay, so if you have G multiplied three divided by four, then this one become one. Then, right, for this one, do you agree if I size it this way, the extrinsic delay should be the same, right? Because I have the same R, same C, then the extrinsic delay should be the same. That's why I need to multiply by G. Okay, but if this could make you confused, forget about it, okay? The main point is how to calculate the logical effort. Right, so let's try one more, nor gate, okay? So how do we draw the nor gate? This is the nor gate. A, B, right? And then you have all in the bottom, the pull down network, right? So the, can you let me know how I should size it so it has the equivalent resistance? How should I size the PMOS? PMOS will be two and two, and MOS will be one and one. MOS will be one and one, that is correct. Can you think, uh, okay, maybe you forgot how we size the inverter. Inverter four is two, one. So can you say again? Four and four, Professor. Very good, yeah. Be careful of this, right? Four and four, and then two and one, right? Now, then we are asking, what is the gate cap seen by A? It is four plus one. Now, now I'm don't, I don't put the capac unit capacitance anymore because we know that they cancel, right? Four plus one. And that, so that what is G? It's just the gate cap seen by A divided by that of inverter, right? We already said for inverter, you see three. So this is five divided by three. Is this okay? Any questions? Right, so now when you see this thing, you, you will see more than other people. Even I did not draw the cap, you know that there's some intrinsic cap here. You know there's a gap, cap, gate capacitance, right? Other people only see, oh, I have a big transistor, but you also know that we have cap. So this is a- oh, Professor? Yeah. Uh, so, if we uh, take different sizes of the uh, PMOS and the NMOS, so will this uh, G, I mean, the G value will remain constant, right? Irrespective of the changes in the W by L. Like, say, so like we do not take a standard uh, CMOS with P width as two and N as one. Let's say we take it different. Uh, your your voice is broken. What, what, what different do you say? You mean uh, become five or something? Yeah, like uh, if we say that, let's say the PMOS W by L is uh, 8 and for the NMOS W by L it's 4 and then we uh, size it. So the G will always remain constant, right? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, depends on the reference, right? If my goal is reference to the smallest inverter and that is what we really do in digital logic because we don't want to size something larger than what it can be, okay. I mean, <clears throat> right? So we always use this one. Okay, oh, and now I get it. You are saying that maybe we're not doing two one, maybe you're doing four yeah. one. Okay, yeah. yeah, yes. So let's say in your technology, yeah, that is a very good question, right? So everyone pay attention. I only, I, I remember I have one slide just to draw this figure because I wanted to emphasize this is the baseline, right? So it might not be the baseline. For example, in your technology, like later in FinFET, 40 nanometer, you actually you find PMOS and MOS, they have the same driving power. So maybe you do one, one. This one may give you the same delay. Then in that case, your law gate will have two, two, one, one. Okay. Yeah. And, and then in that case, yes, then the logical effort change. Now, so that is why it's so important to understand what we're doing, right? So I said, some of these are outdated because these are for relative large technology, but all this uh, terminology, all this uh, methodology is still valid. So, but you need to know how they come from. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Professor. Yeah, good, good point.
Now, there's one more thing. When you go to the industry, do not assume the same terminology as we learn in the class. It's always good. It's good to map to it, but always good to talk to the people. Do you, what you really mean that, right? You say, oh, you know, I learned this. Uh, my professor was not very experienced. He told me this. Uh, is this what you're talking about? They might have other meaning, right? Just confirm with them. Do not spend the whole month doing your project and then turn out that you say, this is not what they mean. And then even you bring out the textbook, so what? This is not a class, right? They still say that you did the wrong job, right? So make sure you communicate of, with them properly, okay? Now, so this is the logical effort and uh, inverter, of course, is one, right? Because it's to itself and then depends on the number of input. You have land gate and nor gate. We proved this two input and two input nor gate already. You can do similar thing or this, okay? So logical effort is about the gate capacitance because it's related to the fan out. We want to correct the F. And the p-value is about the drain capacitance because it's about the intrinsic capacitance, uh, intrinsic delay. We want to correct the value of TP0, okay? Now, so now if you look at this uh, equation again, you will appreci appreciate a little bit more. You see that I can plot the delay of any logic gate and it depends on the fan out. You see that if, I have an inverter, G equal to one, P equal to one, right? So it has a 45 degree nine. You see that we always have some delay due to the intrinsic delay, right? We talked about that already. No matter how strong my arm are, I can lift the weight very easily. I always have a delay that need to lift up my very heavy arm, right? So that is the intrinsic delay. After that, you have this effort delay. They call it effort delay, right? You need to pull the real stuff. These are the real stuff you need to pull. Right. If you are a land gate, you start with something, right? Maybe uh, I'm just, uh, 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 I mean, this, uh, this car is just uh, have larger overload, right? Maybe you're, uh, you have more engines so or you're heavier when you try to carry something. And also it is more difficult for it to drive a larger fan out because of its uh, logic gate effort. Okay, so here we define one thing you find very important is called G times F. Okay, which we call the gate effort H, H, just a definition, right? So this can be confusing. If I were you, I will write in the cheat sheet, right? So don't, don't get confused. Remind yourself, G times H, G times F is the gate effort. Okay, any questions? Now with this, then I can start playing with a uh, general logic gate train, right? Not just inverter.